<laughs> but it's definitely oh, like if we had to play Oregon or something. Oh, yeah. Michigan State's a one seed, right? It's a two seed, and we'll have two years in a row. And then we're supposed to almost feel. Are you serious? Okay, so good morning. Good morning to those online. So we are doing or aiming for rapid fire three. So let's make sure first off. So, Katie, you want to start us off? Sure. So, quick contact horn. Uh, epidermis looks pretty normal. Tension is drawn in the dermis to the kind of cleared out spaces, which I know sometimes you can see with rapid lidocaine injection, but these have granuloma around them, which makes me think they've been there for a little while longer. Yeah, so, so they may be related to the granuloma formation, or they they may be lidocaine and then you have granuloma separate. So how how are you going to work through your differential? Uh, so if it's actual material in the granuloma that's responding to that, it would make me think more of like a silicone granuloma because it's mm -hmm. kind of unhealthy. So we're going to do a little diffraction here and you do have make out. It's a little shiny. There you go. Polarizable, or in this case, really diffractable particles right there. So you could do polarization or diffraction, either one works. So for foreign body granuloma, and the question would be silicone or silica. Silicone is non refractile, non diffractive. And silica is um, both diffractive and refractile with polarization. Um, so if you have silica granuloma, are you done with the patient? No, because they can still have sarcoidal. Correct. So sarcoidal granulomas form around silica, and you. If you look at people who have silica granulomas, they have a much higher risk of going on to, to sarcoidosis because they're granuloma formers, so they, um, they need a full workup. Okay. David, you are here just in time. <laughs> Um, assist. Yeah. So it's kind of like projections. So this we're down that. probably in what layer of the skin? So it's that. So it's in the sub Q. Yeah. And yeah, we so have. So like a paniculitis, there's. or a infiltrate. Lots of calcification. So lots of calcification and a granulomatous infiltrate. Mm -hmm. So a calcifying paniculitis. So calciphylaxis, bigger dozen vessels. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of a lot of calcium for calciphylaxis. That would be down in the capillary vessels. So let's look at those. And so pretty clear. Those are pretty clear. Um, Slightly can you do this? So lipodermatosclerosis, absolutely, or any form of fat necrosis can do this. You need to look at their renal status and their um, calcium phosphate balance, but most of these people are normal. It's just a dystrophic calcification secondary to the necrosis with not a primary metabolic process when you see this. So you need to work them up, but usually it's benign and secondary. Um, so you have dilated vessels that are maybe more venous lake-like, 
being irregular, jagged, mm. and not within the dermal papillae. Anything else going on? Um, I mean, it looks, the dermis looks kind of pale and like it's not normal collagen, the inflammatory infiltrate. Yeah, kind of fibrotic. How mm. about down here? what you're pointing to. It looks like dots. It looks like uh, when they're inflammatory cells, they look like they're dying, like some of them are pink. So pink. Um, dying or keratinizing? Perhaps keratinizing. Perhaps keratinizing and a cantholytic and nucleocytoplasmic ratio. Suggestive of cancer. That's exactly what it is. So a cantholytic squamous cell carcinoma, background cellular elastosis, fibrosis of the dermis, venous lake. But the more important thing would be down below. Um, <coughs> These would be very good testable because it's sort of practical, real life. You got lots <coughs> of red herrings, you got dilated vessels, you got a funky dermis. What's the, you know, these are slides you would actually sign out in practice. So, what's the key relevant <laughs> finding? So, so in that case, there's no attachment to the pieces. So there's no visible attachment in that field. It may just be plain dissection, but it also brings up the question of metastasis. Too. Um, P63 is good for adnexal carcinomas, but primary squamous carcinoma from other sites can be positive. So that's more for something that's adnexal versus metastatic adeno. Not, not so helpful in the squamous world. So it looks like you have um, a biopsy of a papule with some vascular spaces. Looks like it's filled with blood. Um, okay. So maybe like an angiokeratoma. Yeah, this is good for an angiokeratoma. <laughs> Lots of, it's just like when you go to open that jar and someone has been, you know, they've already done all the work for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a little pseudo epithelium, but it's like a here as well. stroma. So let's look. Okay. This is kind of normal. Yeah. How about the collagen here? You have a loss of collagen looking. It's, there's infiltrate within it. Um, dilated blood vessels. So they're little dilated blood vessels. And the collagen itself. Let's make sure I think we're a little bit out of whack here. Um, kind of whirl, mm. smudged, lots of blood vessels, and then you have this stuff. And it's like a granuloma, like loose process around this, like loose stroma here. Yeah, palisading um, granuloma around something. Something. I don't know what that something is. Okay, so. Any any thoughts from anyone in the group on this kind of world collagen pattern with lots of vessels? Hypertrophic scar. Hypertrophic scar. And then what might be sitting in the hypertrophic scar? Triamcinolone. Mm. The odd thing here is triamcinolone <laughs> eliciting a granulomatous response, which can happen, but it's kind of counterintuitive to have triamcinolone acting as a foreign body and eliciting granuloma, but you, you can see it. Well done, Ashley. So I 
Yeah. You know, you should really go into dirt. Yeah. Ready for the exact thought about it? Thought about it? There's something in the drainings. Um, that's probably not fair because of the way it shelled out. I think it is not an easy read. <laughs> So, kind of a either really shallow punch or a tiny shave here of pretty normal looking epidermis um, with some perivascular and superficial um, infiltrate um, to the dermis. Looks lymphocytic in this power. Um, that's pretty much all I can. Also, I mean, there's some brown color in there. I don't know if that's just the same. What do you think about the vessel here? Um, really tell from here. <laughs> Let's go higher. So what kind of tumor would be sitting in vessel? Breast. Breast. Inflammatory breast, yeah. Mm, so intravascular, <laughs> intravascular um, aggregates of large atypical cells. Um, so inflammatory CA, here you see it in a little bit smaller vessel here in larger vessels. There is actually some inflammation, but that has nothing to do with inflammatory CA. The diagnostic for inflammatory CA is just the metastatic tumor restricted to the intravascular space. Superficial infiltrate marked acanthosis. It looks like the horns prelose. Is this psoriasis? Um, that's a, a reasonable thought. The, um, your, the cells the within the acanthosis, are they particularly large and glassy or are they kind of small? Um, kind of small. Kind of on the small side. Um, psoriasis, <coughs> the tend to be large-ish. Right. Here they're kind of small. Hint that the whole thing is probably a crusted keratosis rather than being psoriasis. Basically a seb without mm -hmm. prominent horn cysts. Mm -hmm. Let's pick up the pace here. <laughs> Easy button. <laughs> okay, well done. This is done. <laughs> and, and that, in fact, was choice C. Was this is a very good. <laughs> so it looks like a lot of kind of pink glassy um, cells mixed in. It looks like a lot of maybe vascular spaces as well, and then some superficial ulceration as well. So. Vascular spaces or adenoid spaces formed by acantholysis within nests of atypical epithelium. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> more educated. Um, 
So if this is all atypical cells, high nucleocytoplasmic ratio, evidence of keratinization, pink around the cells. Mm -hmm. Think of the squamous. Yeah. Big acanthalytic squamous cell carcinoma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has some features kind of like a blue nevus. Features like a blue nevus. So what features suggest blue nevus? So it's a uh, it's a large um, bulbous melanocytic proliferation with some pigmented uh, spindle cells, and there's that blue nevus type stroma. Yeah. So it is a bulbous proliferation of spindle and epithelioid cells. You can see visible pigment, and you can see sclerotic stroma at scan. So by outline, pigment, and stroma, you are correct. It's a blue nevus. Very good. Shave, obviously. Um, looking within the epidermis, there's some high NC ratio and some areas with some keratinocytic tibia that appears to go almost, I mean, not quite full thickness, almost full thickness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in some areas, balance. maybe a little nested. That's probably approaching full thickness over here at the edge. Yeah. So looks bones, and then there is yeah. some inflammatory infiltrate. So in this area where there's heavier inflammation, it could be confusing is that reactive atypia versus real, but you get away from the areas of atypia, and there or away from the inflammation, and there's certainly atypia that persists. seen a unilocular uh, space there. It looks like a hair follicle is emptying into it. Okay. Thank um, you. So it's just <laughs> and then it looks like it has the uh, cuticular lining that's red that you could think of with the steatocystoma or the dermoid cyst. Correct. So this is somewhere between steatocystoma and dermoid. Do dermoids have follicles emptying into them? Yes. Do steatocystomas? Yes. Do steatocystomas have vellus hairs within the oil? They do. They do? They do. Huh. So steatocystomas, if you look, um, look at the oil that comes out of them or look histologically, you can see fine vellus hairs. So vellus hair follicles <coughs> are acceptable in a steatocystoma. Um, so you need to look clinically. Is it solitary? Is it multiple? If there, if the hair is only vellus, that doesn't make it a dermoid. That still could be um, a steatocystoma. A larger terminal hair would only be dermoid. So pH with or without neutrophils. Looks like more bacteria in there than the purple. Yeah, and that's probably all neutrophilic debris. It would go one higher if you want. Yep, I see them both. Okay. <laughs> so, pH with pus and your differential is? Okay, and that stands for? Um, so here is halogenoderma, and then chromo, chromo um, blasto, blasto GI, uh, leishmaniasis, and, <coughs> and P. vegetans. And with the <coughs> eosinophils present, either P. vegetans or one of the fungal organisms would go to the top. But this one is actually something a little bit different with pH and pus. 
on both hard on the split cone rod. Gaudi crystal. That's exactly what it is. Feathery Gaudi crystals. So gal mm -hmm. causing reactive PEH with pus. <laughs> Two G's. Gout would not be <laughs> common in that. Giant green. Different little giant green big. <laughs> oh, big, big green, big giant. <laughs> big giant. We got <laughs> big green giant. So first off, oblique cut of the specimen or very thin patient with epidermis on both sides? Yeah. <laughs> oblique. It's always the second one. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. So very oblique cut, though. thank you. So probably a little papule or something maybe a little bit raised or just badly gross thin cut. Uh, Not here. <laughs> <laughs> that's sorry, because sorry. that's <laughs> real life, that's also testable, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything within your scope of practice? <laughs> okay. So, um, Eckers cordon, there's hair follicles, or... Um, and the hairs are large or small? Kind of small. Yeah, so lots of small hairs. <coughs> and what else? So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pale stain. Pale stain. Material between. Is it mucin? Or, or is it? No, it's, these are big foamy histiocytes. Foamy histiocytes. Foamy histiocytes on delicate skin with lots of small hairs. Um, Anybody? Is that the last yeah, one? Okay, so yeah. it's eyelid type, so facial skin, and then it's l delicate skin, lots of small hairs, and then the foamy has just. So, xanthelasma, very good. Chairs. Mm -hmm. So, little papule. Looks kind of like homogenized papillary dermis, loss of breedy. I don't really see any pigment drop out from this height. I can't really say any other intelligent things. Corneum normal? Uh, rather compact. So, <coughs> compact hyperkeratosis, in fact, thicker than the epidermis. Mm hmm. Um, the epidermis has loss of reedy pattern, loss of basal layer. You commented on homogenization of the dermis, and then underlying that, what's here? Oh, uh, well, inflammatory infiltrate. A sparse lymphoid band. So, what's your diagnosis? So, could this be like a sclerosis at atrophicus de la mancha? This could absolutely be lichen sclerosis. So, lichen sclerosis, and it can be atrophicus or it can be hypertrophicus if there's superimposed LSC because people rub and scratch, which is why we tend to say LS now instead of LS and A because it's not always A. So it's not always atrophic. So how, so the key features for lichen sclerosis, hyperkeratosis, effacement of the reedy, homogenization of the dermis, sparse lymphoid band. How would that differ from radiation dermatitis? Um, so radiation, I think, acutely can have some inflammation, but then at the end it does not have inflammation. So... You can look for radiofibroblasts. So... <laughs> V-nectasia. <laughs> so all, all of the above are correct. You would expect to see very large, irregularly ectatic vessels instead of these little skinny things. You would expect not to have the lymphoid band. You may have radiation fibroblasts, and what would be absent are these hair follicles because they would not be present in radiation dermatitis. They would be replaced with radiation elastosis, looks like solar elastosis, but takes the place of the adnexal structures. How would it look? Um, uh, let's see, what else? 
Oh, morphia. That's the other one in the differential. How would morphia look different? Mm. I guess you don't really have the horn changes as much in morphia. I don't think about it. So you tend not to have the changes in the stratum corneum. You tend not to have the interface dermatitis with squamatization of the basal layer. You do have the homogenization mm -hmm. in superficial morphia. You don't have the lymphoid <coughs> band. Instead, you have deeper perivascular lymphoid aggregates, and you have loss of spaces between the dermal collagen bundles, whereas it's retained here. Okay, very good. Um, so it looks like you have some um, hyperkeratosis, um, some hypergranulosis, consider like some warning changes. Okay. Um, I'll see why you to be at a suggestion. And are the nuclei normal size? No. Normal nucleocytoplasmic ratio? No. So maybe a um, squamous cell carcinoma? So squamous cell carcinoma and overlying the squamous cell carcinoma, like, mm. like in simplex chronicus. Okay. People pick their squames, especially mm. on the dorsal hand. People just are constantly mm. picking their squames. So benign PEH wordy LSC type change overlying a squam really, really common. And that will never have atypia, so always make sure you're paying attention to the acanthalytic areas underneath. Good. What's the predominant cell type here? And is it just me, or does it look like everything's pixelating there with the nuclei are kind of squared off because of the pixels? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like way pixelated. They're coming in this week. On Wednesday, the be Wednesday morning. Okay. So they need to. You have it on auto contrast? The image, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that. I've seen that do that. But well, I'll play with it later. Okay. Play with it all. Um, so it looks like it's trying to create vascular spaces. I would say they're like endothelial but a lot of them for that dense. Yeah, so I'd go a little broader. We've got a spindle cell proliferation. Okay. And there are definitely vessels in here, and there's the pale grayish background, so it's mucinous. So a mucinous spindle cell proliferation in the dermis, what's your differential? <laughs> I don't think I've built that differential yet, sir. So uh -huh. I'm going to need to. Anyone want to jump in? Mixoid, spindle cell fellows, where are you going with this? Yeah. So, undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, mixoid, DFSP, those would probably be the top of my bad list. Um, you could think about neural proliferations potentially. Neural, so a neurofibroma. Um, the edge seems to infiltrate a little bit into the collagen, so I'm a little more worried about the bad side. So what stains might you want to put on it? CD34. If it's positive, that could be either neurofibroma, usually with a fingerprint sign, rarely desmoplastic melanoma with a fingerprint sign, most commonly dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. Um, what if it's CD34 negative and 13A positive? And those are donuts in there. 
question you have. Then dermatofibroma, but the other thing to remember is undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. Okay. That's CD34 negative, strongly 13A positive. Okay. Um, so, you know, what we used to call mixoid MFH, pleomorphic undifferentiated sarcoma, um, or undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, that is um, usually very strongly 13A positive. So the 13A versus CD34 <coughs> works beautifully if your only differential is DF versus DFSP. If it's broader than that, remember there are other things that will stain bad things and good things in each ca in each bucket, both CD34 or 13A. So it's good to sort of have a handle on what that short list is of things. And it ended up that particular one with a diagnosis of, we don't know, cut it out. Yeah. Would you call that a donut in there? Uh, I didn't see a great collagen. <coughs> um, you're, of course, referring to collagen donuts of yeah. dermatofibroma, correct. Very elusive. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so, you know, cornoid lamella looking thing over there. You have cornoid lamella looking thing over there and over here. And the center of poro can look like anything. It can be lichenoid, it can be psoriasiform, it can be atypical. So always look for the flanking coronoid lamellae and your diagnosis is poro characteristics. So um, let's say we have a thickened, um, <coughs> more really thickened horn. It looks like some Or crust. Crust. It's probably so serum crust. Surrounding neutrophilic debris. Kind of have a dense proliferation in the dermis. Okay. Um, it's just like kind of a, the superficial part is more pale staining. Um, but then looks like a lot of large atypical cells, kind of spindly. So spindle cells and large atypical cells. So like a, you can think of like, like a melanoma or a. What's your differential yep. for, and there's a big Mercedes-Benz tripolar myco mitosis. Um, it's like a good um, in cars, not good in tissue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is your differential for an atypical spindle cell proliferation slammed up against the epidermis? It's like an AFX. Um, I mean, you make it more. So there's a. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a mnemonic, and the okay. mnemonic for atypical spindle cells slammed against the epidermis is it's slam. Slam. Okay. S spindles. for spindled squame. Squame. L for lyomyosarcoma. Lyomy, sorry. A for AFX. M for melanoma, and then you need immunostains. Mm. That one? Yeah. AFX. So oh. CD10 positive yeah. negative for everything yeah. else. Yeah. Here's just an option. Like yeah, that's right. Sorry. 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 Alright. So, a little itty bitty shave here. Looks like he caught like the tip of a pore. So maybe like, you think of a dilated pore of whiner or like a pilar sheath they can't thumb on. Or something that's just centered around a hair follicle. Or that. Um, looks like, uh, looks like it's palisading a little bit. Maybe it's fine. Yeah, a little palisading. So things that would and wouldn't palisade. Um, anything in the hydradenoma poroma group would not palisade. Um, things that would palisade. Maybe trichelomoma. Trichelomomas, basal cell. Basils. Are there any pink basal cells? Mm. Not that I know of. Infundibulocystic and pinkus pink. uh, are the two types. So pink strands, blue buds, or pink strands, blue buds, and horn cysts. Anastomosing in pinkus radiating from a central follicle like structure okay. in infundibulocystic. So that would be in the differential top of a squamous cell carcinoma. Basically, it's we need they need to go back and take more tissue 
-hmm. It's probably not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think got signed mm -hmm. out as um, clonal acanthoma, which means indeterminate. <laughs> For, for me, that's a little more in the dermis than something I'd call an acanthoma. Acanthoma should be purely epidermal. So the money is at, at the keratinocyte tibia, which to me looks pretty full thickness with acanthalysis, so I'm at uh, Bowen's. Yeah, Bowen's. Does Bowen's tend to have long and snaky buds? Mm. Or is AK more likely to have Yeah, I guess it could be AK. Yeah, so maybe hypertrophic AK versus Bowen's were definitely somewhere in in there. The long, snaky acanthosis is a little more um, AK ish than Bowen's ish. So, um, it's kind of a, that follicle is kind of obliterated by... Yeah, follicle's kind of obliterated. All kinds of inflammation with eosinophils, neutrophils. And are these neutrophils, or what are they? Those might be... No, those aren't neutrophils, but... Eccentric reniform nucleus, uh, ample cytoplasm. Yeah, gotcha. So LCH. So I see eosinophils, I see edema, I see hemorrhage, I see um, Langerhans cells beating on the infundibular portion of the follicle. Everything adds up to LCH. You stain them, they're CDA1, CD1A positive. What else can recruit lots of Langerhans cells? really, really bad contact around. So any eczematous process um, can give you Langerhans cell microapsises, usually not in the follicle. Mm. Um, the other thing is any type of arthropod. Mm. So scabies, remember kids get misdiagnosed and treated for LCH with alkylating agents mm. when they have scabies. Um, and this clinically was a tick bite but is a pretty good dead ringer for Langerhans cell histocytosis. So just remember clinical pathologic correlation and um, arthropods absolutely can mimic um, LCH. This is a deeper cut of the same specimen, and there's your tick. <laughs> right, so there's the tick hanging on on the outside. Um, but, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's but if you just had that portion you had, it really <laughs> looks like you see it. So this looks like a glomangioma. Very good. So large dilated vessels, and then just one, two, three parallel rows of round nuclei forming strings of black pearls. So glome angioma, where it's an angioma with glome, as opposed to a glomus tumor, which is just a tumor of glomus cells. Of the two, which tends to be painful? Both. Um, more likely solitary glomus tumor. Mm -hmm. Glomangiomas are multiple, inherited, and usually painless, whereas mm -hmm. glomus tumor is more likely solid and painful. Dr. Elson, yes. what would you see on like a tufted angioma? Like what would you look for? So tufted angioma is capillary vessels. You don't have the glomus cells, and they form cannonballs in the dermis, and it's usually a child with an expanding red patch or plaque on the shoulder region. And the other name for tufted angioma? Uh, no, that's... Um, yeah, the THH is hobnail angioma. 
tufted hemangioma is, you are correct, Ashley, angioblastoma of Nakagawa. Oh, Nakagawa. You should talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you discuss that very nicely. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Nakagawa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like the top of a blue nevus. You certainly have spindle cells, you have brown pigment, and you have sclerotic stroma. So those are the key things for blue nevus. Uh, so <coughs> blue the buds in the dermis. Um, okay. Uh, is it that palisade, trichoblastoma? Um, so trichoblastomas, what does the stroma look like? That's more pink and sclerotic. Fibroblast rich, concentric, looking just like the outer root sheath. Does this have any stroma at all surrounding these nests? Or is it just pushing between pre-existing large collagen bundles? It's the latter. Pushing it's the second. Um, so, anyone? <coughs> Could it be a basal cell? What kind of basal cell? <laughs> Micronodular. <laughs> and why is, why is the decision <coughs> important? Um, Infundibular cystic is a very indolent growth pattern. This is a very aggressive growth, growth pattern. And not only is it aggressive, but with it, <coughs> pushing its way between the big, large collagen bundles, what's curatage going to do in terms of defining the tumor? Just piss it off. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to push it down more. Um, like I'm not sure I would have phrased it quite so poetically, <laughs> but it is basically going to do nothing. Your curette slides it's over that right collagen. <laughs> so you curette, and it doesn't feel like there's much tumor there in terms of friable stroma. And yet, these can be monstrous and deep and infiltrative. So, the infant, uh, <laughs> infundibular cystic has a fibromyxoid stroma. Micronodular lacks the fibromyxoid stroma and instead infiltrates between pre existing large collagen bundles. I'll give you a moment to read. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was a Trump rally there. <laughs> 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 Seems a little harsh. Right way to look at it. Good. I will remember a basal cell to remember it. <laughs> okay. So it looks like we have a bunch of spaces hypothermous with a rather thin endothelium. Could they be lymphatic spaces? They absolutely could be mm -hmm. lymphatic spaces. So like a Malformation, like a lymphatic malformation, mm -hmm. which we used to call cystic hygroma, right. lymphangioma. Um, nowadays, they tend to be venous or lymphatic malformations, and you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have a vascular proliferation. Thin wall or thick wall? They look pretty thick. So yep. like a, some arterial, um, yeah. like an AV malformation. Like an AV malformation, absolutely. Arterial venous malformation. Um, Poro? Poro. Yeah. That was easy. Lamelle, <laughs> <Well, laughs> go ahead and hit the easy button while you're there. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> That's the tiniest Poro ever. <laughs> Quick up to the edge. Yeah, the <laughs> Sender of Poro can look like anything. Yeah. Right, always <laughs> <laughs> make sure you're looking at the end. So if the, the message is, if there's something, a lot of things are one looker, you know what you're looking at. If you look at it and you don't know what you're looking at, 
do some systematic things. Look at your corneum, look at the deep vessels, look at the periphery, look for those clues and also know what things tend to trip you up. And the only way you can do that is volume. clues is if there's hypergranulosis, it's probably corneum. Okay. If you have um, blood aggregates in it, it's probably crust. So this one is a thick corneum, and if you get away from the bump, the corneum is still thick. So where do you think you are? Um, acral. So somewhere acral skin. Um, so I was looking at like kind of the holes in the in the inferior portion of the cornea, is that just a normal finding? Just like here? Or maybe? like back to your fungal could be bacterial? <coughs> well, those are a little big or for fungal, probably more like an acrosyringeal. Okay. Acrosyringeum that you're seeing. Right. Um, is the dermis normal? No. Fibrotic? Yeah. So like a fiber keratoma? It's an acquired digital fiber keratoma, exactly. Um, often concentric perivascular fibrosis, just like an angiofibroma on the face. Mm -hmm. So angiofibromas on the face, if solitary fibrous papule, if multiple adenomas of tubers, tuber sclerosis, angiofibroma on the digit, if solitary acquired digital fiber keratoma, if multiple Keenan's tumors of tuberous sclerosis, mm. right? So multiple angiofibromas in either location, <coughs> tuberous sclerosis, but what other syndromes can have multiple angiofibromas? Fucosinosis, sialidosis. Angiokeratomas oh, sorry. in that yeah, case, but angiofibromas, MEN, and mm -hmm. which MEN does it tend to be? MEN1. MEN1, correct. So not the multiple mucosal neuromas, that's MEN2, but um, MEN1, and then bert hogg is another big one. Is it Costello's? Yeah. Uh, Are those that is a good question. It has been described in neurofibromatosis, but much less commonly. And Costello's, we should look that up and find out for sure if it's true or not. Mm. Lots of little pink cystic-y looking spaces. And what would that correspond to? <coughs> um, probably a lobular paniculitis. So a lobular paniculitis and... Um, well, pancreatic fat necrosis because of the soapy look. Exactly. So you are absolutely correct. That is saponification of a fat lobule, which is diagnostic for pancreatic paniculitis. And so either the person has gallstones or they have cancer. Right. And it's usually um, undiagnosed pancreatic cancer when they present with the paniculitis. So stakes are high to find out what's, what's going on. This little papule with this uh, dermal proliferation of slightly um, cellular material. Uh, not that impressed. It looks like on the face. I mean, I could maybe buy this for like an angel fibroma. Yeah, exactly. So little hairs, concentric fibrosis, gray stellate fibroblasts, fibrous papule, angio fibroma. bump with kind of a buttress or collarette um, type look and you got um, a lot of dilated spaces, probably vascular, it looks like there's some red blood cells in several of them, so... Lobular or diffuse? Um, I, don't, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of lobular. Lobular with fibroseptic. 
Yeah. So I was going to go with hygienic granuloma. You are correct. Lobular eruptive capillary hematoma with fibrocepti and a colorette. Acanthalysis with dyskeratosis, it's a little bit endophytic, so I think warty dyskeratoma would probably well be the Well done. One. So acanthalytic, right. someone needs to pass that easy button over. Um, acanthalytic <laughs> dyskeratosis. And that was easy. It's a solitary large lesion, somewhat endophytic, so probably warty dyskeratoma. Lots of corons, villi <coughs> greens. So does dilatory whiner have hypergranulosis? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So the rubbing would be key. So one of the things in the differential here would be lichen simplex chronicus parigo. You know, it's more of a bump. So more parigo nodularis. Um, what other thing would be in the differential besides parigo nodularis? And let's ask the fellows, what else would you think? Okay. Yeah, early eruptive stage of a keratoacanthoma, which this absolutely <coughs> could be. So you'd look for subtle things like a few EOs in the infiltrate, a little bit of elastic trapping. Um, but this is either prigo or this is early eruptive stage of a keratoacanthoma. <coughs> they develop hypergranulosis in every follicle, the epithelium makes begins to expand and that becomes the crateriform or crateriform proliferation. Flex biopsy. So corn is uh, thickened. Um, so this is uh, you know, diffuse infiltrate in the papillary dermis. Um, so is it really diffuse or is it focal? Mm, so is it top to bottom, side to side? Um, I mean, it's kind of side to side, but not top to bottom. I mean, it's, it's not quite side to side bottom. either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a localized mm -hmm. infiltrate. What kind of cells? So histiocytes. Like so histiocytes and a granulomatous process probably. And palisaded in areas, interstitial in others. So what's yeah, your so differential? GA. So GA would be top of the list. Um, other things that are kind of related like to... Necrobiosis or like MXG. So necrobiosis lipoidica tends to be top to bottom, side to side. MXG tends to be a big nodule. Um, but things that are GA-like, annular elastolytic, so, granuloma could be... One and this actually is engulfing a lot of elastic fibers, mm -hmm. so it may actually be annular elastolytic granuloma. And the other thing, there's some neutrophils and debris, so palisaded neutrophilic and granulomatous dermatitis (PNPD). Are there EOs too, or is just only? Uh, let's look. Let's see. Oh, there are a couple of EOs there. Yep, there are a few eosinophils. What were you thinking with that? Uh, more just the interstitial granulomatous drug reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually that's a very good thought. So interstitial granulomatous drug. So it would be a GA type differential, but adding interstitial granulomatous drug, especially with the EOs, is a very good thought. Um, annular elastolytic, palisaded neutrophilic granulomatous dermatitis. <coughs> you, you need a little clinical correlation. Maybe I have anchoring bias. I wouldn't call it layer cake per se, but it looks like a bunch of like histiocytes kind of just splayed all throughout. So it looks like a bunch of histiocytes splayed all throughout. Um, do histiocytes give you nuclear molding? No, I 
guess not, because of you're asking it as a question. Mm -hmm. See how that is kind of like a rectangle mm -hmm. there? So the nuclei are large or small? Mm, large. Small. <laughs> I was going to say large, but he didn't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Compare them to ones like this. Significantly bigger. Significantly bigger with nuclear <coughs> molding, busy, busy dermis, single file rows. Oh, so like, like, up there. like metastatic cancer. Like carcinoma on cross, metastatic breast. Mm -hmm. Busy, busy dermis, mm -hmm. line up in rows, large <laughs> cells, nuclear molding. Yeah, metastatic breast. Okay. Okay. Pigment at the junction. Okay. What do you mm -hmm. think about the dermis here? It looks like a scar. It's certainly dense and pink, and then mm -hmm. underlying the dense and pink area. Um, not uh, infiltrate of some sort. Mm -hmm. Lymphoid band. So look up at the screen. Hi hyperkeratosis that's red. Yes pale homogenized dermis, blue lymphoid band, lichen like sclerosis. Correct. So process. you're correct. So it's an aggregate of cells. They have some visible pink cytoplasm. They have duct differentiation. And they have this osteoid-like perivascular stroma. Mixed and it's so characteristic, it's called poroma stroma. So osteoid-like poroma stroma, non-palisading, pink cytoplasm visible duct differentiation, something within the poroma acrospiroma clear cell hydradenoma group. So, an acrospiroma. Can you pick right up on the duct differentiation? Mm -hmm. yeah, we're right at the hour. So we didn't quite do 50, but we did 45, which is pretty good. Okay. Excellent. And we will sign off.